I'm Howard Kurtz, and here's today's Spin Cycle. I spend a lot of time on Twitter, some might say too much time, and I always have the feeling that I'm maybe, as I try to be provocative and entertaining, uh, about 140 characters away from blowing up my career. That's not an irrational fear. If you look at the latest example involving CNN commentator Roland Martin, who was suspended by the network where I work, um, after uh, tweeting during the Super Bowl, one columnist said maybe he'd had too many nachos. He was making fun of the David Beckham TV commercial in a way that some uh, gay organizations found to be homophobic. He's apologized, but the damage has been done, at least temporarily. And there's been a number of cases like this where uh, people have gotten into trouble doing the social networking thing. And it's because it's not only Twitter. It's anything you say off the air, even if you are paid to give your opinions on the air. So, for instance, another CNN contributor, Dana Loesch, uh, got a lot of flack for saying that she, too, would have urinated on those dead Taliban soldiers the way that some U.S. Army uh, personnel did. And then if you go back a little bit in time, you have Rick Sanchez, who got fired by CNN for saying on a radio show that he thought John Stewart was a bigot and kind of poking fun at Jews and whether they control the media. And at MSNBC, Pat Buchanan hasn't been on the air for months now. And the president of MSNBC, Phil Griffin, has said that he was troubled by what Buchanan wrote in a book about race and immigration and didn't think this should be part of a national conversation, although Buchanan has been saying similar things for at least 25 years. So that made me think, you know, these networks, they hire hyper-opinionated people to come on and uh, be very provocative, and then they are shocked when they might say something out of school when they're off the air. It's kind of like bringing a pit bull into your house and then being absolutely stunned that's chewing up the furniture. You're paying them for their opinions. Now, look, I understand you have no right. There's no, nothing in the Constitution that says you have a right to be on television. So if you write or say or tweet something that embarrasses your employer, the employer has every right to pull you off the air. But where is the line? What is the standard? It's kind of hard to know these days. And if the reaction that some news outlets have to Twitter is to insist on vetting in advance when anybody says on there or to tell you you can only tweet about things related to your job, which is a new policy at the BBC, then you've kind of destroyed the spontaneity and the fun of Twitter, uh, which I really think has become a very important news service in this country, almost like the new AP in much shorter fashion. So we're all trying to find that line between being provocative and entertaining and being part of this rolling conversation at the same time, not writing those fateful few words and hitting the send button in a way that's going to uh, come back and haunt you the next day. I'm Howard Kurtz with today's Thin Cycle.